The Life of Pablo is the seventh studio album from hip hop legend, rapper, producer, fashion designer, politician, everything else under the sun, Kanye West. It's been just over five years since its release in early 2016. And in that period of time, Kanye has experienced maybe the most volatile and tumultuous period in his life. From the infamous TMZ interviews, scrapping various albums, having more children, becoming a born again Christian and running for president, of course. This has been a period of immense highs and immense lows. The life of Pablo is maybe a reflection of that, especially with how crazy the rollout of this album was, as well as its structure. Although, sonically speaking, a lot of people may point towards Yeezus being the most challenging and different album in Kanye's career, but I think the life of Pablo is just as boundary pushing, but for other reasons. Kanye has always been a product person. He describes himself in that way. His music has always reflected that in the sense that the finished product or the finished album is always extremely cohesive and tight. Even something as out there and abrasive as Jesus falls into this bracket. The life of Pablo, however, is the furthest thing from that. And it's for that reason why I think this was such a risky move for Kanye. The rollout was almost farcical, the features are from all four corners of the music world, and the structure of this album is as loose as any other music you're gonna find. Even after the album came out, Kanye wasn't done. Over the next three or four months, he continued to tweak and add and take away and change different aspects of the album. He would add extra vocals, he would change some of the drums or some of the bass or some of the mixes, add features, take away features, or even add a whole new song like Saint Pablo. He wanted this to be a living, breathing piece of art, and I do believe that he achieved that goal. The way we came to engage with the life of Pablo is kind of similar to the way we engage with Kanye as a public figure. In terms of the music and the lyrical content on the life of Pablo, every emotion you can imagine from Kanye is on display. FML featuring The Weeknd is a vulnerable, dramatic display of Kanye's struggle with temptation and specifically his relationship with Kim Kardashian. It's similar in aesthetic to Real Friends featuring Ty Dolla Sign, where the two artists detail quite vividly their feelings of detachment and isolation from their loved ones. Lyrically, it's quite similar to Welcome to Heartbreak from 808s and Heartbreak, but even sadder in my opinion. Alongside these moments of immense vulnerability, the life of Pablo also contains some of Kanye's wildest and most hilarious songs to date. Father Stretch My Hands Part 1 is widely beloved for a number of reasons. It's got the Cuddy feature, that euphoric beat drop, but of course it's infamous for that bleach bar to which I'm still to this day trying to decipher its exact meaning. This is also one of a multitude of songs that was tweaked and changed with later updates of the album. He added extra vocals, what sounds like a whole new choir added, and I think it works perfectly. Famous with Rihanna is another standout song. The Nina Simone interpolation, as well as the Sister Nancy sample towards the end, and Swizz Beats instrumental are significant contributions. Kanye's bars about making Taylor Swift famous and possibly having sex with her is as hilarious as it was in 2016. But jokes aside, his bars have that arrogance and playful nature to them that made people fall in love with Kanye in the first place in the early 2000s. The life of Pablo for me is the most accurate portrait of Kanye as a multifaceted person. Always looking forward, scatterbrained, innovative, but amazing as a musician. In terms of features, there are very few albums in the last 10 to 20 years that could rival this insane stacked guest list. Just off the bat, there's Kendrick Lamar, The Weeknd, Frank Ocean, Young Thug, Rihanna, Kid Cudi. There's everyone on this album is pretty much a superstar. I'd argue that the only album that could possibly rival this kind of feature list would be Travis Scott's Astroworld, who surprisingly doesn't feature on The Life of Pablo. Kendrick Lamar was arguably the most highly anticipated feature, particularly because he'd just come off the back of releasing his magnum opus to Pimp a Butterfly. No More Parties in LA is, for me at least, the kind of song that I would dream of coming up with. Madlib, who is undoubtedly one of the best hip hop producers of all time, teaming up with Kanye, one of the greatest hip hop artists of all time, and Kendrick, who is the greatest rapper of his generation. Kendrick spins this decadent and vivid tale of Hollywood excess and materialism with his usual perspective and wit, whilst Kanye somehow 
holds his own on a track with Kendrick Lamar. In fact, uh, while I'm of the opinion that Kendrick Lamar is, like I said, the greatest rapper of his generation and quite possibly of any generation, I think that No More Parties in LA is the one single example of Kendrick being outshone on a song. Kanye's bars are hilarious. They're witty. They paint such a vivid picture of his mental state at the time of writing it. He speaks on his family, his emotions, even his struggle with writer's block, and he describes himself as a 38-year-old, 8-year-old. The thing about this album is that once you finish a song, the first time you listen to this album, once you finish a song, you have no fucking idea what the next song is even going to sound like. You get the smooth and pretty lush highlights, and then the very next song is the Yeezus-esque Freestyle 4. As previously mentioned, we have the liberating, euphoric, emotional Father Stretch My Hands Part 1, right before Part 2, which is this almost confessional-like journal entry. The point that I think I'm trying to make is that because Kanye is so focused on the idea of a finished product, making something that is this so inherently unfinished is such a risky move. Whilst an album like Jesus, sonically speaking, just listening to the music, is the most experimental thing that Kanye has ever released, I think Pablo is the riskiest thing he's ever dropped. This album is bookended by two songs that explore two of the most important things that dominate Kanye's life, and that's faith and celebrity. Ultralight Beam is hands down one of the most striking opening songs to an album I've ever heard. The sparse, grand, lush production that's heavily inspired by gospel music is amazing. Kanye speaks quite briefly about his faith and his relationship to God before handing the baton to the likes of Kelly Price and Kirk Franklin and most significantly Chance the Rapper. Chance's verse is up there with the strongest that he's ever written as he poetically discusses his faith in both God and Kanye as a mental figure. This is a prime example of Kanye acting more like a director of a film than a traditional rapper. He's crafted this space and laid the core idea and foundation for the song, and then he brings on these collaborators, these very talented collaborators, to fill and colour those ideas. He's worked in this manner for a long time now, and even so, the life of Pablo remains the most collaborative effort he has dropped so far. That collaboration and sharing of ideas is, I think, inextricably linked to his strong faith. Saint Pablo with Sampha closes out the album as Kanye discusses his legacy and his position as an artist. He describes himself as a genius. He says, this generation's closest thing to Einstein. Don't worry about me, I'm fine. There isn't an artist working, I think, that is as assured and confident in their own abilities as Kanye West. And I think that must be part of the reason why so many people struggle with his inflated sense of importance and his ego, because he backs it up with the product that he consistently puts out. Saint Pablo wraps up so many of the themes of this album, particularly in regards to legacy and fame and image, and it shows that even on a project that is so scatterbrained, he's still able to neatly wrap up these ideas in a nice little bow. The Life of Pablo is such a bizarre entry in Kanye's discography. It basically plays out like a highlights reel of his own life and career going down every avenue you can imagine. It's also sadly prophetic in how volatile and unstable it is. That's because Kanye's personal life and mental state has never been more closely examined and scrutinized than it is right now. Hopefully this can pass and Kanye can get back to doing what he does best, which is making amazing music. Those are my thoughts on The Life of Pablo. What do you guys think of this album? Make sure to leave comments down below. Make sure to like, subscribe, and dong the bell. And I shall see you next time.